Um, pieces of information that we wish we would have known as we were seeking out our career. Things we knew when we were in school or just outside of school. Okay, so I'd like to have the panelists introduce themselves. I'm Rachel Powers with the Citizens Environmental Coalition. I'm Erin Novak. I'm a graduate student at Texas A&M University. I'm Bell Harris. I am a legal assistant at Shanks and Hauser. So could each one of you maybe tell us just a little bit about what your career is and then maybe a piece of information that you would have wished you would have known when you were in school or just recently getting out of school? So uh, the Citizens Environmental Coalition is a coalition of about 150 groups that do environmental work in the Houston region and we work to keep them connected with each other and with the public through publications and events including Earth Day, the Wild About Houston Film Festival, and a newsletter that goes out weekly that has typically between, between 10 and 20 jobs listed in the newsletter. So just plug for that. Um, something that I wish I had known in school, well, I laugh about it now, but I took organic chemistry for fun. That was not a good idea. Um, <laughs> I wish I had known that before I started. Um, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and I did journaling. And I look back now, I moved recently, and I ran across one of the journals that I had. And I'm like, I want to keep make sure everybody knows about all of the different efforts that are going on related to the outdoors and the environment. And I'm like, but that job doesn't exist. Well, let me tell you, it exists. And I'm doing it now. It's really kind of exciting. I was like, oh, I wrote that down, and now I'm doing it. And if I had only known, I could have, well, I had a great trip getting it, but it was fun. Sure. I'm a master's student at Texas A&M University in ecosystem science and management. I am doing research in Savannah fire ecology, so looking at different grassland communities that have had different histories of land management and different aspects of restoration on those grasslands. Um, and uh, my advice for I guess, undergraduate students, because I'm still a student, thank you, um, is just to try a lot of different things. Um, really start early. Um, don't turn down any experience. Volunteer, do internships, meet lots of people. Just put yourself out there. And um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was an undergraduate student, and I figured it out along the way. Um, but it's okay to change your mind about things and if you realize that something's not working for you or that you're not where you feel you should be that's okay and make sure you're aware of that and do what you can to change that and get where you want to be so i am working at a law firm currently and um before this i was working in environmental consulting um in school i wasn't really sure what i wanted to do career wise and so i essentially was just looking for a job where I was still using my degree whenever I graduated. So I um, ended up in this position where I really enjoyed the work I was doing day to day. I was writing reports about wildlife or vegetation, but I didn't like what I was doing in the grand scheme of things, which was working for oil and gas companies. And not that there's anything wrong with that, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. So. Um, I started to look back at the connections that I made in my internship and um, reached out to people who were working in different fields and decided that I wanted to go into environmental law. And so I'm working at a law firm now that doesn't work with environmental law, but it does um, give me connections in the legal field, it gives me experience in the legal field, and um, it's given me my path. So I guess what my advice would be is really talk to the people that you meet in internships and um, through professors or anybody else that you might meet and ask them about what they do and think about how that fits with what you want out of your career. So Rachel, so I want to point out one thing. We have this like we have these slides here and these slides have the people who the names are supposed to be here. From, unfortunately, Mary Ann couldn't show up here, so we, we asked Rachel, who was just outside of one of the tables, to come in and fill in. And one of the reasons we were really interested in her coming and filling in is she knows where the jobs are. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit more about what you do, putting the jobs together, the types of jobs, all of that kind of stuff? Because I think that's really interesting stuff to hear about. Yeah, so I work, it's a small organization. I'm the only regular employee right now, so I rely on interns and volunteers 
for the organization to be successful. Um, so we hire, you know, I actually shouldn't say this, but I don't look for environmental science students. I look for people who are bookkeepers. I look for English majors. I look for journalists. I work for look for business students who've done marketing and communications. So I look for all kinds of people. The environmental folks will find me. Um, so, but there are lots of different jobs with environmental organizations, and environmental science isn't the only way to get in to those organizations. They, I think, no matter. Even if you are an environmental studies major, um, if you start working for a, a nonprofit organization in particular, you will be doing things that don't really have anything to do with the environment. And you'll still be making a difference. You'll still be able to support the work of environmental, support environmental work and be involved. Um, but I know, like, I worked at the Austin Nature and Science Center and they were building a museum um, about water quality. And so there's a great museum. It's extraordinary, really cool, really fun, really motivating work. And I had to go through receipts to make sure everything that was returned as they were, because they bought from Home Depot and then they had to return stuff because it didn't work. So I was going through stuff like that. So you end up doing things that aren't related directly to the environment, you know, going through receipts, but it was part of a big effort to create this water museum in Austin. So it's a lot of fun. But um, yeah, we typically, like I said, have between 10 and 20 jobs at any time listed on our website. But uh, some of them are seasonal, so I'll know if things are coming up. Um, there, you know, there's the grapevine, the, you can hear about things. And I'm always happy to talk to people about career options. It's one of my favorite things is uh, talking with people about opportunities and connecting them with opportunities to make a difference. So, Aaron, you are actually a graduate student, and uh, you're, you're getting a master's degree, and you're in the middle of it right now. Can you help us understand your thought process with getting the master's? What decisions did you think about when you were getting in? Why did you pick the program? Things like that would be really helpful for people who might be thinking about doing that themselves. Mm -hmm. So I picked this program that I'm in right now because it's ecosystem science and management, so it has a real dual focus on the science and doing the research to analyze ecosystems, but also giving us the skills to be able to apply what we've learned to manage and actively manage ecosystems. Um, and that's something that I'm really interested in because I want to work in a field that involves management. I mean, I love doing research, but I really like doing research for the purpose of applying it myself. And that's the kind of job I would want to work in in the long run. Um, and then I chose to get a master's degree first because my undergraduate degree was in general biology here from the University of St. Thomas. And so I really wanted to um, start with a master's instead of just getting a PhD and what was really a new field for me. Um, and I also think getting master's degrees in general are just a really, it's a good step to train you to become a graduate student and train you in the process of doing research. And it's also, it helps you, it helps your resume, it helps you get experience, it helps you make connections. So I would really advise looking for master's programs. So, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You're, you have the weirdest position of all of our panelists. You're, you're in the legal aspect of the world. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the legal things that go on, the things that you work on? Because I think that's really interesting from like a career aspect. That here is talking about conservation in college, but we have somebody that's involved in the legal aspect. Can you just fill us in on, on some of the things that you do and how that all meshes together? Yeah, so um, in my first job, I was working in um, environmental consulting. I worked with um, the different regulations that oil and gas companies are held to. Um, and I found that that's what interested me most, like reading the codes and um, trying to understand how their different practices fit in with that. Um, and in deciding that I was going to pursue a career in the legal field, I knew that I needed to get experience before I could change into that completely, like go straight for law school. Um, so right now, I'm getting experience just understanding how the law works and um, how people work within that, how people work with the courts, um, but it's not directly related to the environment. 
Cool. So, in, in long term, what do you hope to do? Um, I am applying to law school, and I hope to work in an environmental consultant, not consulting, I'm sorry, an environmental law firm, um, and approach the environmental and conservation stuff a different way. I, I think that's really fascinating that you've identified that you need legal training achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So now you're having to go outside of the world that you want to make a difference in and to get kind of that specialization. How hard was it to make that decision? Um, it, it was something I didn't know anything about starting out. So I, I talked to a lot of people and I asked people a lot of questions, um, nitty gritty questions like what do you do day to day? What about your job? Um, is rewarding, what about it is like sort of difficult. Um, and gathering information from people who are working in those fields is how I made that decision. It's really fascinating to realize that there are jobs that will improve the environment that are not necessarily somebody who is actually on the ground working with their hands in the environment. So I think it's really interesting that at least in two aspects we have individuals who are really trying to work in that area outside of the direct hands-on ecology. Uh, whereas Erin is, is doing something slightly different. She's trying to go and, and deal with the problem directly. So lots of different jobs available in that area, right? Don't think that there's only one kind of job out there. Um, I have a lot of questions. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? I'm sorry, well, can you repeat the last part of your question? Yeah, I guess I'm saying, like, I feel like I have a very specific vision of what I want to do, but I also mm -hmm. feel like it's hard to find a grad program that does exactly what you want to do. So, how do you just compromise and how much is, like, inside? Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to repeat that for this side in case somebody on this side. <laughs> so, basically, I mean, it's a very good question, yeah. which is that how do I figure out with a graduate program, if there's a specific thing that I want to do, how do I actually figure out whether or not to go for the specific thing I want to do, or maybe loosen out my restrictions and try something else that's more available? Is that what we're trying to look at? Yeah, so how, how do we deal with that situation? Yeah, that's really tough, because um, when applying for graduate school, it just it's a lot of research of just looking up different universities and programs, and then like looking up the professors and what they research, and then emailing them and hoping and praying that they'll just respond to your email. Um, yeah, it's really tough, um, but I mean what happened in my case was uh, I sent out probably like 50 emails and maybe got 10 responses um, And so that really narrows it down for you already um, And then once you get there there will be some element of compromise usually But a lot of times the professors like to see that you have your own interest and as long as your research interest aligns somewhat with theirs like they would love to hear your ideas and work with you on doing something that you are interested in. Because that helps them too. It helps them to have people in their lab that are broadening their focus. So you really have some opportunity to get what you're interested in done. Does that answer your question? Okay. Do you feel like you've had to compromise any of the things that you were interested in? No. I mean, I got really lucky. My advisor's research really lines up perfectly with mine because I was interested in grassland ecology and community diversity. And his research is in fire ecology and grasslands and its effect on plant communities. So it really aligned perfectly with mine. And I get to do stuff with fire, which is really interesting <laughs> to me. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, you can ask a question. You can ask a question. All right, I'm an old student. Um, can you talk about the role? Uh, we talked a lot about mentorship, and we talked a lot about um, finding mentors within your or or own organization um, and building a network. But can you talk about the role of collaboration and collaborative work and how that deepens in, and makes your network richer? Just look at it. Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> I, I strongly believe that um, so much of what you do is based on that. Um, so it's great that Aaron is working on a prairie 
ecology and fire. It's really exciting stuff. Um, sometimes, uh, and I might have a student comes come to me looking for a job doing you know prairie ecology, grassland ecology, and if we don't have those networks, I can't put them together. And so what I see very often, not just at an individual level, but at an organizational level, is there are groups that are working on the same thing, but they haven't heard of each other. And it's just like, ah. <laughs> or people will go and try and start a nonprofit. And I'm like, well, you know, why don't you just go work with them and learn the ropes and then see if there isn't a distinct area that's different from what they're doing that you could do. So. Um, so, and I do get a lot of people who come to me after studying science of some sort, uh, who've been doing uh, environmental work. And they're like, yeah, I can change a prairie, or I can change the life of this prairie chicken, or I can um, learn something that can change the world. But if you can't share it with people, it just stays right where it is. Um, and so our organization is really about communication trying to spread the word and trying to connect people. Um, and every time I send out our newsletter, I'm hoping somebody goes, oh, I had no idea that was happening. I need to be a part of that. Um, I need to support this. We need to partner on something. So, um, and when that happens, it's really exciting to see what, what can happen. I can go. So um, I am very good friends with a lot of people who work in environmental organizations in ways that are different than what I do. Um, my friend works for Urban Harvest and they often have volunteer events and we go in and interact with people and learn about this, the work that they do. Um, Urban Harvest does gardening, they work with food security. Um, and whenever we go in and we volunteer, we have more of a direct impact um, with the communities that are affected. Um, so I guess we are able to learn from each other and um, help them further their goals. Yeah, I think collaboration is really essential to accomplishing work in the environmental field because everybody has different experience, everybody has different tools, everybody has different knowledge, and I mean it takes an army, so it's really important to keep up connections and ask for help and help other people. In the previous panel, Daniel spoke about one of the ways that you can really get yourself a good job is to become a specialist, to really specialize in information that other people may not have. And so. What happens is when become, when everybody becomes a specialist, in order to make big jobs happen, we have to collaborate, right? So it really is important that everybody continue to collaborate and also improve their ability to communicate. You know, take from somebody who tries to get other people's jobs, and you can tell, right, mm -hmm. that one of the things that helps get people a job is their ability to communicate and speak, right? Take English classes. <laughs> Lots of them. It's important, right? It, writing and writing and, and all that process is really important. Um, did you have? A, I don't know if you had a question earlier. You kind of put your hand up earlier. Did you have one? Um, kind of, kind of a hit. I guess it has to do with the master's pro program. So whenever you were applying for her, the masters you were going into, and you had gotten a gotten a bachelor's in biology. Biology was there. Was there like, I guess, a lot of classes that you had to take ahead of time in order to, in order to be qualify for her that master, masters before even doing like you know the required courses of the math masters program, or was there like some sort of tests you have to take? Um, I didn't have to take any other classes that weren't like prerequisite classes. I, just, I had to take the GRE, um, but I did an internship or a couple internships in between undergraduate and graduate school. Um, so I interned for Katy Perry Conservancy, um, for the Houston Arboretum, for the Parks Department, and I think really getting experience is probably, I, I want to say more important than like taking um, prerequisite classes, but it's really important to have experience in your field. Because that just, it gives you things to talk about because you're going to go and interview with your potential advisor 
gives you things to write about in your application essays, um, and it helps you learn what you're interested in and what your research questions would be. So I think experience is really, really a big part of that. How long did you go between your undergraduate and your master's degree? So I took a year in between. And mm -hmm. that year, what did you specifically do? So I worked for the Houston Arboretum doing, um, I guess, vegetation research, so a lot of vegetation surveys. Um, learned a lot from really great people there, great mentors. Um, and then I worked for the Parks Department for a year in their natural resource program. And my project was working on a riparian restoration, but uh, I did a lot of work on a lot of different things there. I learned so many things. Um, I did vegetation surveys, I learned GIS, um, made some great connections. So it was a really, really great experience and learned a lot. Question here. Uh, well, more than a question, I just want to thank Rachel because she encouraged uh, people who are in science people to just be part and get involved and get interested in uh, environment, which is like a big issue today. And um, well, like I'm business background and I am uh, studying industrial liberal arts here and I'm the happiest. Mm -hmm. But um, well, I'm just, uh, I'm just very thankful that you like, um, like really um, make an emphasis in this that mm -hmm. everybody can be part of. We all, we all have like skills and knowledge that can be used for this. Rachel, what percentage of the job do you post require strict environmental science skills? Zero. Fascinating. What overall are the skills that most of the jobs require? If you're going to try uh, to generalize. Writing. Okay. And so when I, so another hint, you know, things I should have done in college that didn't, um, that I didn't, was go to career services and get them to help you do your resume and have them proofread it, and like 20 other people. But uh, that's the first thing I see. I look at that resume, and if they're glaring errors or if it's poorly organized, or like I got a resume the other day from somebody, and I couldn't tell whether they were in college or not. Um, you know, it's just not clear. So I'm like, I'm only hiring college students for this one job, so. Oh, not graduate, so I couldn't tell whether this person even qualified. So writing, use your career services. Um, but yeah, because you reach out by email now, and so you need to be able to write well enough to to make me go, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. It doesn't know, matter what they're talking about, but they have to say it well. So, so that is the most important thing. Um, another thing, I need people who can well, respond to emails, you know, because that's how we do so much of our work and answer the phone and talk with people. So, so yeah, those are the main skills that I'm looking for. Um, you can learn a lot of other things, but those things I can help with, but it's much easier when you come with those skills already. Going off that conversation, Belle, you want to work in the environmental field, but you're gonna go through a slightly different Path to do it. When you were young, did you want to work directly with the environment? When I was young, yeah. Um, <laughs> I meant like young, 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 like grade school young. Kind of yeah, um, I always like saw myself becoming a scientist, and my first title had the word scientist in it, and so I was really excited about that and like passing out my business cards so people could know that I was a scientist. Um, and in college, I did a lot of research. Um, I thought I had to have a BS. A BA wouldn't be enough for me to be able to do whatever I wanted to do, which is not true. Um, and I did internships where I was working in the field. I was like in a literal field <laughs> like, <laughs> with prairies. Um, so all three of us have had jobs where we've watched grass grow, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it, my dream was never to like become a lawyer. It, it is now, so not like never, it wasn't the right word, but um, I wasn't thinking I was going to be some corporate person. I wanted to be in the dirt and working with the plants. So 
you have to be, you have to have a very special skill set to be a lawyer. This is one thing that I've figured out. You have to be really good at reading mm -hmm. and comprehending a lot of technical information. So at some point you realized that this was the pathway that you were supposed to do. How did you figure that out? Um, so in my first job, I, I worked, I, I worked in the writing portion of the company. Um, I was writing reports about different natural resources um, from like water that would be affected by the project to um, wildlife and vegetation and things that you would expect to be affected. Um, and I had to read about the regulations and how they affect the work that we're doing and how um, whatever pipeline was going to be installed um, might have impact and ways that we could mitigate that impact. Um, and a lot of it was keeping up with regulations as they change um, and reading through it and sorting through the legal language to sort of understand what they actually mean by what's written. Um, and that reading through that stuff and trying to understand it and discussing it with my coworkers was how I figured out that that's the route that I wanted to go. Uh, any questions, career pathways? What is uh, your degree in? Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. I guess you, all three of you could say what your degrees are in because ultimately I think you're probably going to go somewhere slightly different than your degree might say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aaron, what was yours? Uh, biology and theology. So I had a dual major in art and art history with a focus in photography and then I got an MBA. Not one environmental class. <laughs> But I've been volunteering and doing environmental work since I was in middle school, so. So I think that was a really interesting panel with a very diverse group of individuals that are coming and solving problems from different areas. So thank, thank our panelists. <laughs> and so we have 